I control a portfolio of properties worth over $40 million and it's taken me 19 years to get there. So I'm going to share the tips and techniques that have allowed me to create success as a real estate investor. I also want to share the mistakes I've made in my journey so that you can avoid them. Stick around until the end of the video where I'll share a special gift with you in celebration of my upcoming 20 year anniversary. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help a thousand people create a million dollars of net worth with real estate investing. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. Let's dive right in. Number 19, don't over leverage. In 2008 and 2009 in the US real estate market, many investors lost everything. A large majority of them lost their wealth because they were over leveraged. Keep your loan to value ratios in check and be prepared for a market shift at some point. Number 18 is in line with number 19, and that is to build up a cash reserve. On my rental properties and with all my business and personal accounts, I like to have at least six months of expenses set aside as a reserve fund. If my properties have deferred maintenance, such as an older furnace that may need to be replaced at any time, I like to leave some additional funds in the account to cover these things as well. Number 17, diversify your portfolio and your knowledge. It's great to be an expert, but if you are relying on one single real estate investing strategy, and for some reason that strategy is not working as well, that leaves you sitting on the sidelines until that strategy works again. My suggestion is to find two to three real estate investing money makers so that no matter what is happening in the real estate market cycles, you have an opportunity to be making money. Number 16, build your network. There's an expression in real estate investing that your net worth is equal to your net work. I can't understate this enough that growing your network can have a significant impact on how successful you are as a real estate investor. Attend networking events, get connected with your local real estate investing community, or better yet, create your own community and build your network from there. Knowing the right people at the right time can really bolster your business. Number 15, treat your tenants as customers. Real estate investing is a business and businesses need customers. They need good paying customers, so take care of your tenants and in turn, they will help build your business for you. That doesn't mean that you have to allow your tenants to walk over you or take advantage of you. Quite the opposite, actually. If your tenants see you running your properties like a business, they will be much less inclined to try and take advantage of any situation. Number 14, under promise and over deliver. If you're bringing investors into your deals on any scale, it's important to always exceed their expectations. Be honest and upfront with them and be ready to answer tough questions about the potential downsides of investing in real estate. Things don't always go as planned, so if your investors are conditioned to expect challenges, it will be much easier for you to manage those relationships and have an enjoyable experience for everyone involved. Number 13, don't partner with anyone, unless it can help you grow significantly. Hopefully none of my partners are watching this video, but in all honesty and transparency, I would not recommend partnering with anyone unless you absolutely need to. Partnerships can be amazing for your business and being able to grow and scale quickly, but many investors use them as a crutch. If you can do it on your own, I would suggest doing so. If a partner potentially brings the opportunity to grow your business at an exponential rate, then that would make sense. But if it's simply to share the workload and the risk reward, I would challenge you to think twice before partnering. The reality is most partnerships will fail and when they do, it's always tricky to navigate. Number 12, forge your own path. Just because someone else has created success in a certain way does not mean you have to follow the same footprint. The most successful people I have met in the real estate investing community are those who are thinking outside the box, aren't always following the rules, and are leading instead of following. Number 11, be patient. Real estate investing is not get rich quick, it is getting wealthy over time. But that doesn't sit well with many investors who are looking to put in minimal effort to try to achieve maximum return. While I've seen many investors create huge amounts of wealth in a short amount of time, they are the exception to the rule. The longer you can be invested in real estate, the higher chances of you achieving success will be. Number 10, build a strong team. The professionals that you work with as a real estate investor will make or break your business. Things like accounting, bookkeeping, asset protection, and deal flow are paramount for a successful real estate investing business. So start or keep building out your team of real estate investing professionals. Don't be afraid to let people go or replace people who are not performing up to your standards. Although hiring someone new is often a pain in the butt, staying with someone who is not performing up to your standards will hurt your business in the long run. Number nine, start a thought leadership platform. Starting my YouTube channel transformed my business in so many ways. It has significant rewards. I find investors and deal flow through my YouTube channel and having a thought leadership platform builds credibility and familiarity with your audience. A YouTube channel may not be your thing and that's 
that's okay. There are all kinds of thought leadership platforms that can be effective. A podcast, writing blogs, doing Instagram reels, or hosting a mastermind can all be effective ways of creating thought leadership platforms. So figure out what works for you, be authentic, and you will see a tremendous lift in how many people start to follow what you're doing. Number eight, set goals and work backwards. Ask yourself, how much money would you like to make in the next five years? That could be a monthly passive income number or it could be a net worth. Either one works as long as you set goals and reverse engineer those goals to help you meet your targets. For instance, if you wanna earn $10,000 a month in passive income in five years time and your average property generates $500 in positive cash flow per month, you would need 20 properties in your portfolio. That would mean you have to acquire four per year, which is one every quarter. Once you know those numbers, it becomes much easier to put a plan in place. Number seven goes along with number eight, which is get your money right. In other words, you have to know what's going on in your portfolio at all times. This means you need to have some kind of tracking system, whether that's Excel spreadsheets, accounting software, or you rely on your bookkeeper to produce reports for you. If you know where you are financially at all times, it's so much easier to know where you're going and how you plan to get there. So plan a quarterly check-in session with you and your finances. Number six, build in contingency. This mostly has to do with renovation and construction, but it also applies to many other elements of being a real estate investor. There's a reason why people say that renovations go over budget and never get completed on time. That's because most people don't build in contingency or they don't build in enough contingency. I would suggest building in 10% overage on your construction budgets and an additional 15 to 20% in additional time. Number five, be okay to walk away. Oh, I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. Real estate investing cannot be driven by emotions. It has to be based on your numbers and your goals. The moment that those two are out of alignment, then you need to walk away. Some of the best deals I've ever acquired as a real estate investor became a reality because I was okay to walk away from the deal and potentially let it die. If you're not emotionally attached and are ready to walk away, that gives you tremendous negotiating power. So if your numbers don't work, simply walk away and put your energy towards trying to find a new opportunity. Number four, become a master underwriter. Underwriting is the process of analyzing deals. You have to know your numbers inside and out. Even something as simple as being off by 10% on your numbers can have a huge impact on your potential returns. And the smaller the deal, the better and more accurate you need to be because there is less room for error. Number three, hire a mentor or a coach. You can raise your level in your real estate investing career faster and more efficiently with the help of someone who has already been there and achieved success at the level that you're trying to get to. So take advantage of their knowledge and their experience. I do offer group coaching classes that are included in my masterclass. For more information on my masterclass, check out my website at darrenvoros.com. As a special gift to you, use the code YouTube for additional discounts on any of my training. Number two, focus on cash flow first. Equity appreciation is great, but it doesn't pay the bills. If you have a solid cash flow base for your investing, you can go full time as a real estate investor. This cash flow freedom also allows you to take more chances on up and coming markets that have the potential for huge upside in the long run. So build your cash flow first and foremost, and after that, you can then focus on building your net worth. And my number one tip is get into the real estate market as soon as you possibly can. I've seen many investors sit on the sidelines waiting for a market crash to get in or waiting to save more for their down payment. The reality is it's nearly impossible to predict when there will be a market correction. And when it does happen, many who've been waiting still end up missing the downturn in the market. For those wanting to save more, they often can't save at the same rate that the market grows in value. So if you have the ability and you're not overpaying for a property, jump in. The first one is always the scariest and then trust me, it gets a lot easier after that. I'd love to hear about your experience. What are some tips that you've learned as a real estate investor? Drop those in the comments section below so that we can all help each other achieve success much faster. If you have any real estate investing related questions, leave those in the comments section below. Feel free to follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.